So they're comparing this against people who eat junk food. So, oh, you're eating more whole fruits and vegetables and you're eating less junk food, but that's considered meat. So you're eating less meat and more whole fruits and vegetables. Therefore, that's better. That's where that, that sleight of hand is. It's really uh, just misinformation. It's purposefully used to misinform people and, and push them into their religious ideologies. Why would we be the only animal on earth that gets heart disease and other problems from eating saturated fat? Almost every animal on earth runs on mostly saturated fat and then the rest of it is on, on protein, you know, except for like things that like drink nectar and things like that. Like every, everything else is basically, you know, getting, getting fat and, and uh, protein. Carnivores, because they eat animals with fat and they go for the fat first. That's the most important thing in the wild. But also herbivores, because they actually don't break down fiber at all. They can't. Fat, no vertebrate animal can break down fiber. So they, they cultivate bacteria in their gut that eat the fiber. And as a byproduct, they produce short chain fatty acids, which are 100% saturated. And so even a gorilla okay. that just eats green leaves, they get 70% of their calories from saturated fat. Cows get nearly 80% of their calories from saturated fat. And then the bacteria die off and they absorb those as protein. So they're getting 70% fat and 30% protein, but they're eating fiber, but what they're absorbing is fat and protein. So fat and protein is what makes the animal kingdom go round. And uh, same with humans. You know, we have we have the Inuit, we have the Maasai, we have all these different populations that are still to this day eating a very meat-centric, high-fat diet, uh, if not exclusively uh, meat. And they're extraordinarily healthy in a lot of ways. And people will, will try to mislead you and say, well, uh, the Maasai, their average life expectancy is only 60. So obviously, you know, that's not good. Well, first of all, they're not dying of heart disease. They're not dying of cancer. They're not dying of diabetes. They are fit, well, healthy. They don't even get arthritis. Um, and they're also, you know, basically living at a stone age nomad level, right? Yeah. They don't have all the modern hospitals and technologies that we have that, that significantly improve our ability to survive, especially at, at, through early childhood. Their infant mortality rate is high as hell because they don't have all the you know doctors and pediatricians and things like that checking them out. And also they live with lions and they fight them with sticks and they win, right? These are, these are badass people. They are very, very hale and hardy. You should check us out uh, on Instagram. Uh, there's an Instagram account with some of these, these guys from Maasai, uh, the Maasai tribe called the Maasai Boys. And there's one picture of the, the guy whose account it is, and he's drinking out of this river, has this sort of gourd he's drinking out. The patch of water that he gets it from is bright orange. I don't know what in God's name is in that, but it's completely <laughs> opaque. It's completely right. opaque. You cannot see through this at all. You don't know what monsters are underneath it. It is just mud, you know? And he's just, just drinking this. And he's just like, you guys probably aren't going to be doing well with this. You don't have the, you know, the immune system to deal with this, but you know, we're fine with it. So they're drinking that. One of the, the main drivers of improved longevity and, and life expectancy uh, as a population was the advent of potable water. They don't right. necessarily have that. So, you know, it's, it's, yeah, it's true. pretty ridiculous to sort of compare those things, but they're, but again, they're not dying from heart disease. They're not dying from cancer. And so maybe their average mm -hmm. life expectancy is less than that because a lot of kids are dying. Right. And so you have to have a lot of people living well over a hundred. If you have, you know, half your population is dying as a child you know, that's going to be, a, you know, we're talking average here. So half die before 60, yeah. half die above 60, but half are dying when they're kids, you have to get way over 60 to bring that average up as well. So, you know, there's, there's things like that and you could sort of go on and on and on, but. Um, yeah. So I'll uh, interrupt here just because I know for anybody who wants to continue to learn about this, you have a full podcast talking just on saturated fat, which I learned a lot about. I mean, your podcast, you talk about everything we're discussing here and deeper. Um, so for anybody that wants to dive deeper, for sure, check Dr. Chiffy's YouTube channel and podcast um, just to cover a little bit more. Can you briefly talk about the 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 notion that red meat is linked to cancer because I know that's one fear like colorectal cancer but I believe the the research there is more epidemiological it's not really um, sustained uh, yeah absolutely so a lot of this a lot of the nutritional research that comes out is actually pushed through uh, funny enough from a religious organization called the Seventh Day Adventist Church who actually started yeah. and founded 
the field of dietetics and nutritional sciences, I, I believe in 1917, this is this actually fell out of cereal. He was a doctor and he was a Seventh-day Adventist. I think he was a congressman in the U.S. He was an extraordinarily in, influential uh, scientist and thought leader in the early 1900s. And he was of the opinion, as was all of the people in the Seventh-day Adventist church, that meat was sinful because it made people more lustful. People who ate more meat were just more healthy. They had better hormones, and so their hormones are telling them, go procreate. So he said, wow, it makes you lustful. It makes you want to have sex. Sex, you know, lust is a sin. Therefore, meat yeah. is a sin. And so they said, well, you should, you should just eat. You should avoid eating meat on a religious basis because it's bad to eat meat because it's sinful to eat meat. That was, that was, that was an actual thing. People can look that up. And they still believe that. And so they founded the entire field of, of nutritional sciences, and they've been in, involved in it heavily ever since then uh, for a very in-depth look at this. People should look at uh, the work of uh, Belinda Fetke, F-E-T-T-K-E, -E, and she's got a deep dive into this. They are still completely wrapped up in all this. So a lot of this nutritional research, that we call it research, it's, it's really uh, just misinformation. It's purposefully... Uh, used to misinform people and and push them into their uh, you know to their religious ideologies. Um, come out of Loma Linda Medical Center, uh, which is a Seventh Day Adventist medical school and and hospital in California, and so they do the Adventist studies, and that's oh oh my gosh, look you study these Adventists, they only eat plants or they eat very little meat, and uh, and wow they have such better health outcomes. Ah, this must mean plants are great. Well, um, a you know biased I don't know, uh, study yeah. from the get-go. They look at this and they you know, they were using the blue zone studies, for instance. They said, oh, look, they don't eat meat, therefore this is better. But what they don't tell you is that, uh, you know, same population that has the exact same, you know, health benefits and longevity, life expectancy benefits as the Seventh-day Adventists are the American Mormons who have no such dietary restrictions. But just like other religious sects, they don't drink, they don't smoke, they don't do drugs. They don't engage in in, in uh, you know, dangerous behavior, and uh, they have the exact same uh, increased life expectancy. But they don't tell you about those sorts of things. So a lot of these things are biased. In, in first and foremost, one of the ways that they bias these things is they look at uh, they call meat whenever the hell they want to, right? So pizza sometimes has toppings that are meat, and so in a lot of these studies they include pizza as meat. They just call it meat, right? Or fast food. Do you eat fast food? How often do you eat fast food? And, you know, that has meat in it sometimes, therefore that's meat. They don't care that all the fries are, you know, are, 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 are deep fried and trans fats, which we know will cause heart disease. It's now illegal to do that in most countries that, you know, the soda is just full of sugar and all the bread and the processed carbs and the sugary sauces and all these things like that. Nope, it's all meat. So we know that that is uh, misleading on purpose, obviously. And so they count on these things. Means like, oh, they eat, they eat less of this stuff. Well, the people who, and, and so they're comparing this against people who eat junk food, right? So, oh, you're eating more whole fruits and vegetables and you're eating less junk food, but that's considered meat. So you're eating less meat and more whole fruits and vegetables. Therefore, that's better. That's where that, that sleight of hand is. And the main reason that people think that meat, and especially red meat, is contributory to cancer is because of a WHO proclamation that said they found like an 18% increased association with processed meats and uh, colorectal cancer, right? So any sort of epidemiological study, because there's so many confounding factors, because there's so many different things that get involved that could skew your answer. Like we've been told meat is going to kill you for 40 years. So people are more likely to eat meat, they're more likely to smoke, drink, drive too fast, die in a car accident, die in extreme sports, things like that. There's a more risk-seeking behavior. Apparently, eating a steak is risk-seeking behavior. 